In this video, I'm going to show you how to inspect a simple composite profile. So I'll go through real quick on the whiteboard here what it means, and then we'll switch over to the surface plate and I'll show you how it gets inspected. So I'll put the drawing on the screen here. We've got a profile of 40 thousandths to A and B, and then 10 thousandths just to A. We've got one geometric characteristic symbol, so it's a composite profile. In this case, it actually means the same thing as two single segment profile, and I'll explain why right now. So the first segment, 40 thousandths to A and B, okay, so the A is controlling the perpendicularity essentially of that surface to the datum axis. Datum, the uh, datum B is controlling the translation, so the location of that surface from datum B. Now, what the second feature, or, or the second segment does, that 10 thousandths just to A, only controls the orientation to datum axis A. It's, you know, on, the, on paper, it's shown as being at a right angle to that center line. So that's the only thing it can do. In this case, composite and two single segment mean the exact same thing. They won't always mean the exact same thing. I gotta make that clear. If this applied to a pattern, it would mean something very different. But in this case, they're the same. It's actually also the same as doing profile 40 thousandths to A and B, and then using uh, an orientation tolerance. So we could use uh, perpendicularity or angularity in this case, uh, of 10 thousandths to A, and it'd be inspected and reported in the same way. In both cases, you have two parallel planes that are perpendicular to datum axis A that collapse until they catch the high points of the actual surface and you report the measured zone. They won't always be the same, okay? But in this case, it means the same thing. Now, what is similar but doesn't mean the same thing, say if we did a plus or minus, we did a 0.625 plus or minus 20 thousandths, you know, on paper it would be the same thing, but you've got different report or measuring requirements for that. When you're using profile from a datum, it's very, very clear what you're trying to do. When you use plus or minus tolerances, it's a different check. You're using two point measurements for the LMC and looking for that boundary of perfect form for the MMC. And there's no relation of that to anything else on the drawing. It's just an individual check. So I do it this way because this is how 2018 really, really encourages you to do it. Use basic dimensions and profile to locate surfaces. This technique also has support in the 2009 version. So it's not like you can't do it in the previous versions. Where this is helpful to, you know, manufacturing and making parts is that for something like this, this thumb screw, right, it, it could be a little longer or a little shorter, right, that can vary a lot, but you don't want it to be crooked, right, that just looks bad. Even though it's a cosmetic thing, you don't want it. So when you give a lot of tolerance for the location, you can use a separate tolerance to control the perpendicularity. And when they're making this part in most processes, it's going to be easier to control the perpendicularity than the location. So if you think about using a cutoff tool on a lathe, it's the, when you're running the tool in, right, it wants to make it perpendicular to the axis of the spindle, but controlling the carriage is a slightly more difficult. Uh, same thing with a mill. If you put this upright and you're using the z-axis, it can be difficult to control that location whereas orientation is typically easier on a machine tool. So we're you know, getting some uh, design intent into this, even though it looks more complicated, it should turn out to be easier to make. And it's really not so bad to inspect, which we'll switch over to the surface plate right now, and I'll show you at least one way to do that. So I'm here at the plate, and we're just going to measure this part for profile. So I've got a, a little setup here move this into the way. I've got a V-block to simulate the major diameter of this thread. If it wasn't called out at major diameter, I'd somehow have to capture this thread. So thank goodness I don't have to do that. All I need to do is place it in this V-block and that's sufficient to capture that. The V-block is well made well enough that it's going to do the trick for us. Now, when I capture it in here, when we go to datums A and B, I've got to have 
full contact here with the, the V and the V block, and then I'm gonna push it up against datum B. Datum B only needs one point of contact, right? So I'm just gonna push it up there until I hear a little click sound. And then I've gotta restrain it. So they come with these little brackets. And this just takes a, a half a second here. I'll come in. I'm gonna put a little tiny piece of uh, brass between the, uh, the my screw and the actual threads here to protect it. And I'm just gonna apply just a little bit of pressure, just enough to keep it in there. I'll press down again, make sure we're up against datum B. Now, being up against datum B definitely matters here because now this surface of the V-block is datum B, okay? So the bottom of this part is datum feature B. It's simulated with this surface. So we take our measurements from the measurement equipment, not from the actual feature. The measurement equipment, in this case, the surface of our V-block is now our datum simulator. It's essentially the same thing as our, uh, our datum. Now, I've got a one, two, three block to put it on because this sticks out just a little bit. Conveniently, it'll fit right in one of these holes. So I got a nice rigid enough uh, setup to go off of. So I'll bring my height gauge in here. There's basically two things to read off of here. We've got the numbers here, and then we've got our dial indicator. So what we're gonna do to measure the profile, we're gonna come down as good as we're gonna get. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna look at my dial indicator first, and I'm gonna wait till I get a zero there. And I'm gonna come in here and zero out my height gauge. Okay. So I'll move the height gauge away, move it up, and now we're ready to capture the location, capture the location of that surface. When we do the parallelism in a minute, we don't need that. All we need is the dial indicator, but for the location, we're going from the datum feature or the datum feature simulator in this case. So what I'll do, just in case this surface is way out of whack, right? If it's 80 thousandths out of whack, I don't wanna lower the height gauge until I get the right number here. I'm gonna watch my indicator and wait till it gets to zero and then check this to see how close it is. If it's off, you know, uh, a quarter inch or something, then I've got to do some adjustments because what can happen is this indicator only has a limited range of travel. So if you move past that, you'll, you'll get really bad measurements. Let's just say that. So let me lower this down as gently as I can until I get zero on my indicator. I'm going to look at my uh, gauge here, right? I've got 0.6235. That's within, you know, the, the range of the indicator. So I'm happy with that. I'll move it back up. I'm going to drop it down until I get 0.625 on my height gauge here. I'm going to lock it. What that does is uh, stick it at the basic dimension, right? And then we're going to move the indicator around in just a second looking at the indicator, and that's gonna tell us how far we are away from the true position at any point on the surface. We could be um, above the true profile or below the true profile. What we're looking for here is the worst. So the most above or the most below. So let's make that happen. So I should have this in frame. I'm gonna move it around here. We're five thousandths below on this side, go to this side, we're about two thousand to three thousandths below. All right, move over here. All right, once I get that first five thousandths, I'm really just looking for anything less than that. I mean, uh, you know, the surface isn't that big, so we've got five thousandths below the true profile here. Now, where this gets a little tricky, and I'll make a whole nother video about this, but with profile, especially when it's uh, Locked in translation, you're gonna take the worst measurement and double it. And that's gonna give you the tolerant zone consumed for profile. So in this case, what we would write on our inspection sheet is profile 10 thousandths. That's how much of the tolerant zone was consumed by this part. 
Now, that's it for the profile for the location, the 40 thousandths to A and B. We've got that totally under control. Now, we're going to do the profile to 10 thousandths. It's only to datum A. So we could move this whole setup off of this, uh, you know, here, I'll just show you. We could move it up, right? Because we only need to be captured to datum A, datum B doesn't matter. In this situation, it doesn't matter either way because datum B is only stopping it uh, and translation, you know, it's, it's only touching at one point. So it's not gonna have an effect on our perpendicularity measurement. With perpendicularity, we don't care what this height gauge says right here. We're only looking at our indicator. The idea being our indicator runs parallel to the table. So we've got that, you know, there's two parallel uh, planes that are uh, perpendicular to datum A. That's already happening automatically. So we run the indicator across, we, we've, already, you know, we've already got that. It's a, it's a pretty cool system. So what I'm gonna do to make this a little bit uh, easier of a setup is just leave it where I had it before. The setup to datum A and B, like I mentioned, it won't affect our measurements here. You know, I can just go ahead and turn this off, right? It, it doesn't matter for this purpose. So I'm going to lower this down, and we already know the answer. So, you know, if you're screaming in the, in the comments, if you already have, you know, your answer here because you already swept the whole surface, I know what you mean, but I'm just trying to illustrate here. Uh, you know, maybe you need to check this by itself. All right, so we're gonna lower this down, right? I'm just gonna get a zero and I'm gonna move around the surface for perpendicularity, right? I'm moving around, again, five thousandths. Nothing's above the zero. I'm really looking for the total indicator reading here. Okay, so we're still, uh, five thousandths is our worst reading. It goes from zero to negative five thousandths. For perpendicularity, we're, we're going to report five thousandths because the perpendicularity requirement is we're just reporting the width of two planes that are perpendicular to the datum axis uh, that, you know, uh, what do you call it, collapse on the high points of the surface. So it's a slightly different reporting requirement from profile in this case. The difference being this whole tolerance zone is not locked in translation to datum B. It can move up and down, so the planes collapse on it, whereas when profile is locked to that datum in translation, it's a little bit different. Hopefully I can make a whole other video explaining a little bit. Uh, there's a new ASME standard, you know, it came out last year, Y14.45, which has reporting requirements, which are really helpful and explain some of this stuff in great uh, detail. Now, the next thing I want to discuss, what if the drawing just said plus or minus 20,000? So 0.625 plus or minus 20. You know, if, if you ask a math major or something and they look at the drawing and you explain GD and teach them, they'd say, yeah, that's, that means the same thing mathematically, right? Well, when we take it to the plate, say I, I've got plus or minus something so I can do a two point measurement. I come in with my micrometer I just got to take a couple measurements here, All right? So we've got uh, 0.624. I'll take one or two more. 0.622, and I know it's probably a little tricky to see. Point six two three. All right, so what I'm trying to get out there is even though it's, it's technically possible, I mean, you can get different, you know, anvils for this micrometer, you're going to get different results with the two point measurement. It's not matching up with what we got when we use the dial indicator. So when you specify plus or minus, they're going to measure it with something like this, a micrometer or a pair of calipers, which is going to give you even worse measurements because uh, they're just difficult to control. So you can get a different result. If we wanted to do the perfect form check, right, what we could do here, and this is pretty straightforward, is get a stack of gauge blocks that's uh, set to uh, 0.625, whatever gauge blocks, probably a half inch uh, 
half inch, quarter inch, and a, a five thousandths uh, gauge blocks, and then just directly compare it to this actual surface and make sure it's not over it. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can do the stack of gauge blocks, then run an indicator over and just make sure this surface doesn't uh, violate that. Uh, but that that was that would be how I would check the perfect form of MMC boundary, and the LMC boundary gets checked with the uh, two point measurements. The thing is, you're going to get outputted different results. So that's kind of one of the reasons ASME Y14 5 2018 got rid of controlling surfaces with two point measurements because using profile is just much more precise. And hopefully, as you can see in this video, it's really not that difficult. Now, what you might say is, well, I have like a wacky curve surface with all these uh, you know, radii and stuff controlled with profile of the surface. How do I inspect that? Well, the answer is it, it's, you know, case by case, right? It depends. How many are you making? Do you have a CMM? Do you have the, uh, the funds to make a template uh, for the, uh, like a, you know, a gauge for the plate so you can do comparative measurements? And what I'll bring it back to is how would you measure it without profile, right? If you have some crazy surface, you know, these weird features, even though like a CAD defined surface, you know, I, I don't understand how it's easier to inspect it with plus or minus dimensions either, right? Some things are just difficult to inspect. So I'm sticking to the, you know, flat surfaces just to explain the composite profile. And hopefully in this video, you saw that it's really not so bad. You know, in this case, it means the same thing as profile of a surface and then uh, uh, orientation tolerance. Um, not quite the same thing as a plus or minus in orientation tolerance, but pretty similar. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I've been trying to make one of these for a while and hopefully I can make a few more at the surface plate and try to explain a few things, uh, you know, more from the design perspective. You know, I'm not really a metrologist or anything. I have a colleague who uh, explains some of the finer points of the, the plate work to me, but I try to take those gd &T concepts and show you how it gets inspected. And hopefully it helps you understand the concepts a little bit better. So if you like it, please uh, like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think.